So thanks for listening to Module 1, our introduction around commercial real estate development. Uh, we're now going to get into Module 2 and get into some deeper aspects, intricacies, and details around commercial real estate development. Again, my name is Steve Shire, President of Shire Commercial Real Estate here in Austin, Texas. And again, joining me is Larry Nelson with Larry Nelson Development Company. Thanks, Larry, for joining us again. And uh, we're going to get into some more details around commercial real estate development for these folks today in Module 2. And specifically, folks, what we're going to discuss today are subgrade conditions, uh, contours and coverage, environmental issues, and utility availability in commercial real estate development. So, Larry, uh, let's just get started with and, and pick up where we left off last time. One of the things that folks need to be concerned about is subgrade conditions, soil conditions when they develop a property. I was wondering if you could give uh, these folks a few examples of uh, stories around soil issues and things that have happened where somebody's trying to build a building and there may be some soil uh, considerations that they haven't thought of. In the Austin area we have a, <clears throat> we have the full spectrum of, of soils. <clears throat> um, generally speaking I-35 is the dividing line. <clears throat> we tend to have heavy clays to the east of I-35 and of course you go west of I-35, you get into Texas Hill Country and you get into limestone that can be pretty shallow. <clears throat> now you shouldn't use that as a uh, as a cast in stone, no pun intended, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> because we've had, we will, we have discovered huge pockets of clay in the Westlake area, for example. In fact, the middle school on Wall Charlton Road was on a pocket of clay and it created problems. <clears throat> And the reason clay is such a problem is because it's very expansive. As the moisture conditions in the clay change, the clay expands when it gets wet and it shrinks when it gets dry. And the volume expansion can be very considerable. In essence, it lifts your structure. It literally will lift your structure. <clears throat> and it doesn't do so uniformly. And you may get, depending on the thickness of the clay, you get, may get one lift where the clay is thick. You may get a little less over here. And now your structure is doing this. Mm -hmm. And it also tends to break things in the middle. So <clears throat> the clay is a very, very valid concern. <clears throat> As we get out into East Austin, uh, along the Colorado, there's, uh, there's a lot of sandy loam, which is a very nice material in that it is usually low, low expansion, which is called PI, which put in a uh, whole other issue, but <clears throat> the sandy loam doesn't, it's pretty stable. Mm -hmm. It's not, it won't take great loads, but if you put uniform loads on it, it takes it very nicely. Um, so obviously these things, if you're on rock, you're solid. But <clears throat> these things obviously affect the cost of your foundation, and, and it can be a very considerable cost. Okay, and you provide these so when an individual or a business is going to build uh, a commercial property, Larry Nelson Development Company provides those kinds of services to these folks to analyze the soil, or how do you go about uh, doing that for folks? What, how, do, how do you provide that service to uh, a client? Well, <clears throat> that um, uh, the soil exploration is 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 a separate consultant. Okay. So what we do is uh, we 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 organize the team, we coordinate it, we direct their activities, mm -hmm. focus it, bring it all together. The soils exploration is uh, is one facet of the development concept, right. and it is um, uh, it's something that we recommend that a buyer consider having done before he closes on the property. Right. If you're going to find something that's just horrendous, uh, look somewhere else and get a different piece of land. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that, so okay. just, it's, one, it's just one, one of the consultants we'll bring to the table. Okay, great. In addition to soil, there may be issues around tree coverage or slopes. What, uh, what considerations are brought to bear when somebody's looking at trees, something as simple as uh, tree coverage? Well, 
as you know, in the Austin area, we all have a passion for our trees. And in fact, the, our live oaks are beautiful. And, uh, and everybody likes to have a tree on their property. Unfortunately, the trees that are there are hardly ever where you want them. Mm -hmm. They're all, they almost but awfully always seem like occur right in the middle of where your building needs to be. Right. <clears throat> well, the city of Austin in particular and most of the surrounding communities as well are very defensive and protective of our trees. And so there's limitations on uh, what, you know, the, the larger trees. There's a real penalty for cutting a really large tree, and, and the intention is to make it advantageous to essentially design your building around the, the, the really nice trees. Smaller trees, I think it's under eight inches, you can pretty much cut them with impunity uh, <clears throat> and make happen whatever you need to have make happen. But trees are mostly uh, an environmental and a bureaucratic okay. thing. Now, they will also cause you some problems, and if you have trees growing immediately near your, near your structure, immediately adjacent to your structure. Or if you plant trees immediately adjacent to your structure that are of a type that will grow rapidly and grow tall, mm -hmm. uh, the root systems can get under your foundation, can get under your sidewalks, right. can get under things. And so those things need to be considered as you're designing the project. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk real quick about utilities. So a lot of land, not uh, not all land, but a lot of land doesn't have uh, the utilities cut in. One example I can think of off the top of my head that's fairly recent is a client of mine that we were doing uh, a development up in Round Rock and the city of Round Rock demanded that the water main that was not cut into his side of the property uh, as he was going through the due diligence and, and further down the road the city decided well, we won't allow you to tee that off into your property. We want that to be a continuous loop around the property, which added an additional $40,000 to the uh, development of that property. Uh, what kinds of things have you seen around utility uh, easements or utilities, water, sewer, electric, getting cut into a property? What, what kinds of problems can people encounter there? <clears throat> well, the two major ones are water and wastewater. Uh, electricity, I mean, you can run it underground or you can run it overhead. Uh, utility companies generally will bring the, the power to you and get it to you relatively inexpensively. Matter of fact, if it's in their service area, there, there are considerations where they are required to bring it to you by basis on, on the basis of their charters. Uh, <clears throat> water and wastewater, totally different matter. Uh, and obviously there are grade considerations and there's uh, lift stations and there's all kinds of things that can get involved. If, you're, if your property is not currently served mm -hmm. by water or wastewater, uh, <clears throat> generally speaking within the Austin city limits, the city will require you to extend, and maybe even in the ETJ, frankly I'm not sure, but they will require you to extend the existing utilities. Uh, that can kill a project. If, if a wastewater main is too far away mm -hmm. and, you, and you're kind of at, far out and you got to extend that wastewater main all the way to your little piece of property to do a small building, mm -hmm. the cost of that main will kill the project. Right. So it, invariably it waits for the big guy to build further out and he pays the cost and then the little guys in between tap off of it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there used to be a refund contract and that's history. Okay. Uh, so the guy that put, pays to put it in essentially contributes it to the city of Austin and thank you very much. Uh, water is very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice the thing about water, it, of course, it is under pressure and it'll go up and over hills uh, and depending on where it is and the location of the, of the water storage facility and those sorts of things, the water can be delivered. The cost of the main, of course, is still expensive. Uh, <coughs> but, uh, uh, but one, you should, it's all part of the of the pre-construction and certainly a pre-closing kind of a thing needs to be part of the site assessment. Right. We bring a consultant to the table that does that okay. and he assesses the established, what the established utilities, what available utilities are okay. or right. where they are so where you don't, you don't know what the cost is going to be to extend them. Okay, great. Very big number if you're not careful. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the things that we've talked about in Module 2, there, there are some, quite a few details there that you need to be thinking about and when you hire 
a broker to help you find the land, such as Shire Commercial, you definitely want to hire a good developer that has a lot of experience with this because uh, you can really get lost in the process. It's, it's pretty easy to get lost in all the details around developing a new property. So that concludes Module 2. Stick around, we're going to get into Module 3 on the next video and we'll be talking about zoning, impervious coverage, deed restrictions, and easements. So thanks for listening. Larry, thanks for your time today and uh, we'll see you on the next module. Appreciate it.